but there are so many people and so many stupid mistakes to make so that it's going to go on and on and on for a while, unfortunately. <coughs> Let me talk about one other thing, and then I'll go back to the question. Can I erase this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Got rid of it. It's probably wrong anyway. No. The only thing I would add is sort of the, that idea of the humiliation, but sort of the incredulity that Shannon talked about, that it's, it's, it was so, they were so astonished. They had this belief that they were so, um, you know, invincible, and yet within, you know, just a few weeks. So mm -hmm. people that's really that's were just shocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was shocked. I would be a This is going to be so general, <laughs> so generalized. We're going to talk about human activity. Right. What do we do as people, as you know, as organisms that can communicate with speech? Well, reserves to sleep. Yeah. Oh, study. I was going to say study. Eat. eat. Okay. <laughs> study. Okay. Let's well, it's go. all right. <laughs> I'm going to write down. <laughs> this is social. Okay. I'm going to write down. You know, we're social animals. We live together. We live in the cats. But uh, let me add one other thing. Let me add something else. I'm going to add something called extra <laughs> social. And I'll explain what that means. Later. And I'm going to put a dotted line between these, because there's a spillover between all these goofy categories that I'm going to tell you about. Um, if you look at most literature and poetry, one of the things that it talks about, and you guys will love this, is affection in all its different forms, or opposing forms. Hate, love, uh, admiration, hate, um, attraction, beauty. Throw anything in there you want. I mean, it's a pretty loose category. And let's say, uh, I'm going to use the word dominance. I don't know if that's the right word. It might be control. I don't know. Uh, and then I'm going to put in here one more thing, and that's death, which is unfortunately what we're all eventually faced with. Um, most literature and most history and most human actions, in my humble opinion, involve these sort of dominant aspects of our love. Our love and marriage and hate envy, and all that sort of stuff. The desire to control, acquiescence, uh, win, lose, all that sort of stuff goes in here. And then this incredibly powerful underlying force, death, which we all experience, and we're all vaguely aware of, but we ignore it subconsciously. And you know, poets write about death, and you'll see action movies where people are <coughs> shot, and all that stuff. Interesting enough, in those action movies, you never see blood, you just see holes. But it's, uh, uh, so let's talk about the extra social art and science. This is my, my take on things when I read a book sometimes. And I, I'm not saying you should leave any of this, or I'm not saying it's right. But it kind of helps me to look at things or examine things. Art is sort of outside, to some extent, outside the social scheme of whatever we're going on here, because it often looks at those things, or it considers things in a more objective rather than subjective aspects of life. Make sense? Yes. All right. And science, boy, that, that's great. Now, I'm a scientist. You know, you really get away from all of this stuff when you start thinking about <coughs> fractal geometry and, uh, I don't know, integrals and calculus and all that sort of stuff. And it tends to be less weighted down, if you will, by the subjective aspects of life. Art and science tend to be, I guess, don't take my word for it. Think about it yourself. Tell me I'm full of beans. But you know, uh, they, it tends, extra social stuff tends to separate itself from the emotional, if you will, in order to look at something in a purer, I don't know, 
objective way. For instance, physics. Nuclear physics. So I have a very, very close friend who's an astronomer. This brilliant guy. Yeah. You know, he scares you. He scares the pants off. He's thinking about things that, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, whether I'm going to have chocolate in my milkshake or not. He's thinking about a new star being formed in some galaxy that he knows and has memorized or something like that. And so there's, there's all this aspect of human all action. <laughs> what? We have a physics teacher here. <laughs> so, anyway, um, if you're going to read literature, and you're going to read history, and you're going to read, I don't know, my book or anybody's book, or listen to music, think about the way we sort of divide up our brains and how we look at the world. Are we extra social? Are we social? I mean, this is where wars come from. All of them. And of course, scientists are making bombs. So they're mm -hmm. tied into Yes, separate them. <laughs> you can't, nobody, this is all of us. It's not, but there are aspects of our world that uh, we can kind of put into categories and look at. For instance, if you think about affection and you happen to like Shakespeare, uh, Shakespearean sonnets talk about this sort of stuff. You, you got to be 21 to read Shakespeare. Oh, we're putting on Twelfth Night. Oh, yes, yes. Alex yes. yes. and the yes. Music be the fun of love for mm -hmm. Good for you. It's a great play. It's a great it's play. Yeah. yeah. It's a funny, fun play. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, you was perfect. Um, you guys all wrote questions, and some of them, you know, if, does anyone have a burning desire to ask a question? Um, there's a lot there, so I, um, Sierra or Kimberly, or I know some of your questions have already been asked because they were typed up. Kim, anything? Um, I have that maybe we haven't gone into yet, so. Should I go for it? I was yeah. wondering, just like, what if, so like the, in the, I don't know if you found it, but the one with the wine in it? Um, oh, I've seen your question. What what would happen if the generals knew that? Yeah, well, they, they found it, but then what if they reported it? To the then people? the family would have been in trouble, and the soldiers who reported would have been mad. But, but they, that, it relates back to this question of what are there, were there situations where the Germans and French or the Germans helped the French. Okay. There, there in that situation, true story, the Germans said, you know, we're just going to, we're, we're not, we're not going to hurt these people. We're going to be upset, we're going to take their wine, but we're not going to punish them. We're not going to give them our subject them to the ultimate punish, which, punishment, which have been, you know, burning of their house and you know, shooting in front of the, you know, in front of the house. Because they were wealthy. Maybe? No, just because they hid the wine from the Germans. Because the, when the Germans came, they said, "Do you have any wine?" And they said, "No, we sold yeah. it all." So, you know, the, they lied. They so, lied to the Germans, yeah. and you know, I don't, what do you do in a situation like that? Like, you know, somebody fun. wants my good bottle of champagne. I'm like, oh, so I, I drank it last week. <laughs> so, you guys saw it in the movie too. Um, when we watched Sarah's Key, they were hiding the girl in the attic. If, if he had gone up and actually found that girl, they would have been killed. Yeah. Um, so the risks that people took, I mean, they risked their lives by, by doing something for somebody else. You're putting yourself in danger. Right, right, right. right. So, uh, yeah, they, the, the family would have borne the brunt of punishment. Now, had the generals found out that the German soldiers were drinking it, drinking it and not and let the people off the hook, chances are they would have been disciplined. I doubt if they would have been shot, but you know, if you were a lieutenant, they might say, well, you're no longer a lieutenant, you're now a junior officer or something like that. Uh, there is so much material to read. I mean, uh, Do you have any recommendations? I wanted to create a list for them. If I were going to read one book, <laughs> which is fun, it's called Is Paris Burning? And it's unfortunately out of print, but you can get used copies, and most libraries will have it. We might even have it. Clevenet, uh, we use Clevenet, in other words. You so can do we, yeah. Yeah. through Hudson Libraries. Yeah. This is a, this is a, a very interesting book to read. 